Good morning, my friends. Welcome to LH Kids. Really glad you've joined us this morning. I'm John Pritchard, and you are just in time for a celebration. Have you ever lost something that was really important to you, and then when you finally found it, you were so excited? Well, that happened to me this week, see? I was looking through my hockey card collection, and I was looking, and all of a sudden I realized one of them was missing. I looked through here, and sure enough, they were all, it was missing, you see. I know it was missing because it was my favorite card. It was my Wayne Gretzky card. Wayne Gretzky is the greatest of all time hockey player in the whole world, so it was really important for me to find it. So I looked everywhere, up toward my house, high and low, looking for it, and this morning, I found my Wayne Gretzky card. That calls for a celebration, right? Who doesn't love a good party? I mean, I love birthday parties. You know, the drive-by kind, the parades. I love wedding parties, graduation parties. I even love tea parties. Parties are a great time to celebrate something good that's happening. Usually we have a feast, balloons, and even cupcakes. Did you know the Bible's full of celebrations? Today, I want to talk to you about three celebrations in the Bible, and they come from Luke 15. So if you've got your Bible, go ahead and open up to Luke 15. I'll give you a second, okay? See, Jesus spent a lot of time talking and teaching while he was on the earth, and he went around and he talked to a lot of different people, different crowds about different things, and he often used parables or stories to tell people so that they could understand his message. And in today's story, in Luke 15, Jesus is speaking to a big crowd of people, of tax collectors and other sinners. Remember tax collectors like Zacchaeus, we learned about him already. And also in present were the Pharisees and scribes, basically the modern day church leaders of the time. Okay? In the first parable, Jesus said, if a man has a hundred sheep and he loses one, what is he to do? He leaves the 99 sheep and he searches for that one until he finds it. And then he tells all of his friends and all of his neighbors, let's celebrate for I have found my lost sheep. And in the second parable, Jesus said, if a woman has 10 silver coins and loses one of them, and by the way, at the time, a silver coin was worth a lot of money. So you can bet I would be looking everywhere for that coin. So that's exactly what she did. And Jesus says, she lights a lamp and sweeps the house and searches carefully until she finds it. Then guess what she does? Party, let's celebrate again, for I have found my coin. After both parables, you see, Jesus said, in heaven there is joy when one sinner repents and turns back to God. Hopefully you're realizing right now that Jesus is talking to about the lost, the tax collectors and the sinners. But also, the Son of Man has come to seek and save the lost. Simply put, the lost are those who don't know God. Now the third parable it's different, but it's similar. You're going to see here how different it really is, but it starts off just the same. You may have heard this parable. It's the parable of the prodigal son. Okay. Continuing in the Bible, Jesus says, A man had two sons. The younger son said, Father, give me my inheritance today. I want it. So the father gives him his share. The younger son left home. He wasted his money and he lived foolishly. There was a famine in that country, which means that there wasn't a lot of food for people, so there were a lot of hungry people. And so the younger son took a job at a farm feeding the pigs. What do pigs eat, you ask? <laughs> Yucky slop, leftover food, parts of things. Anything that's left over, they just slop it in there. You've always heard the term slop in the pigs. It is not a pretty sight. It's yucky and stinky, and they live in mud and filth. That's what the son was doing. And while he was sitting there, he realized, even the servants at my father's house have more to eat and a better life than this. So the younger son decided to go home and tell his father he was wrong and to ask for forgiveness. And also he wanted to ask to work as a servant on his father's farm. So he was gonna go from being the son of the father who owns the farm to being a servant. So he headed home. And while he was still far away, the father saw him and ran to him and threw his arms around him and kissed him, and the son began to apologize. Forgive me, Father, for I've sinned against God and you. Guess what the father said? Let's celebrate. Again, let's celebrate. With a feast and with the finest robes, and put a ring on his finger and feet on your, uh, sandals on your feet. The son of mine was lost, and now he is found. That part sounds a lot like the other two parables, right? And it is. 
The loss being found and celebrated, the tax collectors and the sinners were pretty easy to relate to that one. But Jesus wasn't finished with the story yet on this one. In parable three, he continues, at this time, the older son came from the fields and heard music and asked, what's going on? And a servant said, your brother is here and your father has decided to throw a feast and a party. He's celebrating. Well, the older brother wasn't happy and he wasn't celebrating. He was angry. And he said, father came to him and said, I've never disobeyed you, father, but you never threw a party for me. Son, the father said, everything that I have is yours. We have to celebrate. Your brother was lost and he's now found. So who do you think Jesus was talking to this time? He was talking to the Pharisees and the scribes. You see, the religious leaders of the time believed that Jesus was spending way too much time meeting with and talking to sinners and tax collectors and stuff. They had upheld the law. They were doing what was asked of them. They thought Jesus should be with them and them alone. But that's not really how it works, right? Jesus was seeking everybody. He came for us all. We're all like sheep who've gone astray, just like the one sheep in the story. We've all, that's all of us. And we're all like the brothers. Some of us live our lives foolishly sometimes, and other times we try to live the law perfectly. None of us can. You see, we're all sinners. Whether we break the rules or whether we uphold the rules perfectly, and Jesus came for all of us, and he came seeking all of us. Jesus used these parables to teach forgiveness, and then he died on the cross to save us from our sins. All we have to do is to know him and accept him. So next time you see a friend of yours or a sibling getting away with something and not get punished, or something good happens to them, celebrate. The next time the, somebody gets to ring the believer's bell at camp, celebrate. And more important, when somebody gets baptized, celebrate. Remember, no matter what, Jesus loves you. And he will leave the 99 and he will search for you. And he will never, ever give up on you. And that is the best reason to celebrate. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you so much that Jesus comes and celebrates and he seeks out all of us that are sinners and that are lost. God, thank you for paving a way for us to forgiveness through your son, Jesus. God, we celebrate the fact that more and more people are getting to know you. And God, thank you for the opportunity to be know you and know these kids. God, we just love you and we praise your name. In Christ's name I pray. Amen.